You're watching Inside the Boardroom, and we're welcoming back Dr. John Hugh, the CEO of Kairos Pharma, to talk about recent data released on an ongoing prostate cancer trial, plus the path forward for Kairos' cancer drug resistance program. Dr. Yu, can we start with some context? Now, Kairos is focused on overcoming cancer drug resistance, as we've talked about in the past. Can you help our viewers understand why this is such a critical problem in oncology today? Sure. We have a lot of great drugs for different kinds of cancers, uh, including lung cancers and prostate cancers, which are uh, some of the most common cancers out there. The problem is those drugs fail to work after about six months to a year and sometimes even two years. Uh, but the, the drugs uh, stops working and we identify the mechanisms by which this happens. And it has to do with a molecule or a protein that's made on the cell surface called CD105. What that protein does is it sends a signal to the cell as it's being treated by the drug of choice to become resistant to that, that uh, drug. And the way it does this is it becomes more de-differentiated, meaning that it becomes more uh, aggressive and more like a stem cell. And stem cells in our body are designed to withstand all the toxins and radiation that you know we receive out there. And cancer stem cells are very similar in that way in that they become very resistant to all the things that we throw on it. And what we throw at it are chemotherapies and other types of anti-cancer drugs. In prostate cancer, we treat patients initially with anti-androgen agents meaning that it blocks uh, an androgen receptor like testosterone. And so this uh, works in that it prevents the tumor from growing, but as CD105 is made on the cell, it becomes resistant to these drugs. And so what our drug is designed to do is, it's an antibody that blocks CD105 and allows these drugs to then work again. Well, before we continue to talk about efficacy, because I know there's some news coming up in September, so later this year on it, uh, let's first talk about what you released on safety. So yeah. on July 15th, there was safety data released on the second phase of your prostate cancer trial. And significantly, um, it was enough to move your stock up 165%. Uh, walk us through what you reported to the market and you know why why there was such a strong reaction well uh w what we reported was that uh, this drug was extremely safe in patients oftentimes drugs like chemotherapies and in this uh, uh disease pluvicto which is a radiation type of therapy induces a lot of toxicity and so we report these toxicities from grade one through four. And three and four are those that require either hospitalization or medications uh, and some kind of intervention, medical intervention to reduce that toxicity. And we found in patients that we found none of those toxicities, meaning that we had no grade three or four toxicities with our drug, which is exceedingly different from what we see with uh, chemotherapies and other drugs like Pluvicto, which are over 50% grade three and four toxicities. So what that means is our drug is uh, extremely well tolerated. It, it's received very well and uh, patients don't get uh, bad reactions to it. And so uh, I think that was a, uh, uh, a finding that the market found uh, very, uh, uh, good in that it, it, it shows that our drug is really well tolerated by patients. And so that's the first step in, uh, in uh, a drug approval. The second is whether it works, which is probably the more important thing. And we'll have data in September on our early cohort of safety lead-in patients, meaning the 10 patients uh, that we've been following uh, s some of these patients for over a year, and we should have a good idea of how it's impacting uh, these patients in terms of stopping their cancers from growing. Right. And what should investors be looking for in those results, whether they're you know completely new to this story or are longtime followers? Well, I think what, uh, you know, uh, any drug uh, seem, uh, would like to demonstrate is that it works in stopping the tumor. Uh, and there are several signs in prostate cancer where it does that. 
uh, it, it stops the tumor from growing uh, by CAT scan. So radiologically, it stops the tumor from growing and it brings the PSA down, uh, it, which is the chemical that's associated with the cancer. And so that also shows that the tumor is, is responding to the drug. So those are a couple of the things that uh, we want to demonstrate. And then, you know, we're doing biochemical studies, uh, genetic studies on the tumor. And we uh, also got a $3.2 million grant from the NIH to test what's called a biomarker. And this is an assay that shows before a patient is treated with our drug, whether they're likely to respond to our drug or not. And a biomarker is important, not only scientifically, but it's important in a clinical trial because it shows uh, 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 us whether the patient's gonna respond to it or not. And what that will do is make a trial more successful in terms of a phase three pivotal trial, which is the trial that finally allows us to commercialize the drug. Uh, it allows us to pick the patients that will respond to the drug. In other words, it lets us stack the deck with more favorable patients that are likely to respond. And so uh, that's why the NIH found this, uh, our uh, findings in our previous phase two trial so compelling that they gave us $3.2 million to test this uh, in our present phase two randomized trial. Well, also in September, you're presenting at the HC uh, Wainwright Conference. Yeah. Um, how are you going to be positioning the company for that investor audience, which I read is leaning institutional? Yeah, so uh, we are uh, uh, talking to institutions uh, more and more that are in, in the healthcare space uh, as uh, our trial progresses, as we demonstrate uh, how our drug works, the safety of our drug, and uh, eventually the uh, efficacy of our drug. Uh, we seek to get more institutions to follow uh, our company. And also uh, we seek partners uh, that will be able to help us uh, during the commercialization phase in, in distributing the drug and also even in, in the later stage trials. And so our drug is, is something that impacts widespread cancers uh, with uh, uh, really uh, the, the, the state of, uh, uh, of the uh, care drugs that are treating these cancers. And so it, it's important that uh, we reach out to these companies so that we can collaborate with them because our drug really makes those uh, drugs that are the standard of care drugs work better in cancer patients. Well, uh, you're, you've kind of alluded to this, but uh, you know, I want to talk about what's beyond the prostate cancer program. So how does the successful safety profile here inform your broader pipeline strategy for other cancers? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so we have an ongoing phase one trial in non-small cell lung cancer, and our drug, we're testing whether it makes Tegriso work again when patients become resistant. Tegriso is a, a drug for EGFR-dependent lung cancers. It's a drug that works exceedingly well in these patients. I've seen up to 50 brain cancers melt away with this drug. Unfortunately, at the end of a year or two, uh, the drug uh, stops to work. And so we're testing in these patients whether EMV 105 will make Tegriso work again. So this is a common theme or a, a common mechanism of resistance in, sp in several white uh, spread cancers. We've also demonstrated it in the lab uh, in breast cancer, in colon cancer, and head and neck cancer. And so we're planning to open these trials in these other cancers, including head and neck cancer in the, in the near future, to show that this uh, mechanism is a, is a central and common mechanism of resistance that we can impact with our drug uh, and help several other drugs that are standard of care for these widespread cancers. Okay, well, so far, I think that's all we've got time for, uh, but doctor, we'll uh, see you back here um, in another interview. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Uh, John Yu, CEO of Kairos Pharma. You can also go to ceo.ca to understand where else uh, uh, the company is going and to get all of the latest updates on Kairos. Thanks for watching.